And so what we're trying to develop is a dry powder inhaler for oxytocin, which is currently given as a solution injections. In developing countries, there's not a lot of electricity, let alone refrigeration. So if we can get it into a dry powder inhaler, it can be much more available across the world. This project was identified as the project most likely to be transformational in maternal and neonatal health care. So that award was presented by Hillary Clinton. And the project has had a lot of significant supporters encouraging us and providing us with the, the resources that we need to take it forward and, and into a clinical development stage. So uh, recently I was able to go to Uganda and that was a very eye-opening experience, I have to say. And we were talking to midwives and, and nurses who were saying that sometimes if they had the oxytocin, they didn't even have needles, syringes, or even the alcohol swabs to administer the actual life-saving drug. And in some facilities where women were giving birth, one midwife was looking after 20 patients who were giving birth at the same time. Oxytocin relies on the actual drug to be administered pretty soon after birth, within minutes, in order to prevent postpartum hemorrhage. Only if you go to these places where the drug can be used that you learn that these are deficits that are out there, and that's when you come back and you look at how your product can actually change that. Ultimately, what, what I think everyone on the Inhaled Oxytocin Project team would like to see is that it is just as safe for a woman to give birth in India or in sub-Saharan Africa as it is in Australia. So we'd really like to improve access to medicine so that women all around the world can get access to life-saving drugs. And that's something that we can achieve and really make a, a tangible difference.